Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi everyone, welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your hosts Deborah Bailey and Carrie Heaps and we're really glad to have you join us again today and um, we have some really interesting things to talk about and I'm sure that you will be um, very excited <laughs> to, hear, to hear all the different things that we will be um, sharing with you over with this particular um, show and of course there will be a few others um, that you will be hearing from us uh, after this particular one that you're listening to and there's others in the past which I will definitely put in the show notes that relate back to this so you will um, <laughs> be able to refer back um, as we were talking before it's a lot of things that we have talked about uh, or things that we were talking about in the past and I think that we, you know, just to take out our crystal ball, and we can start to, to talk about um, how we saw these things coming that we were going to be discussing. So when you listen to this and other subsequent shows, uh, you will certainly understand what I'm saying here. So I am really just going to dive in for various links to WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com, for instance. Um, and uh, you can check the show notes for that. I'm just chomping at the bit to get going here. <laughs> to get going here to, um, you know, really share uh, what we want to talk about. And um, that's why I'm kind of like, okay, <laughs> let's just jump to it. Let's just jump to it and um, get started. And I want to introduce my co-host. Um, Carrie Heaps is the founder and publisher of Strictly Marketing Magazine. She's also the host of Strictly Marketing Talk Radio, a magazine that recently spun off online community for women and men too, looking to gain more media exposure. Pitch Like a Bitch Media, and she owns Knockout Marketing a business-to-business -business telemarketing and lead generation firm. And her passion is to help other entrepreneurs with their marketing efforts to continue their dream of running a successful business. And the company currently specializes in marketing with the magazine, talk radio program, and online community for women in marketing. And Carrie has an extensive background sales, networking, recruiting, and training. She's a former model who specializes uh, specialized in trade show and print work and she's also experienced judge in the beauty pageant circuit and you will also see her extensive bio in the show notes so there's definitely uh, much more than Carrie has done and you will check that out and um, see why I'm talking about how I'm so excited to get started on uh, this topic and subsequent topics that we will be discussing because I think it's time, uh, you know, for folks to understand where they can go now with their businesses at this point, because there's definitely changes coming, and I think you need to pay attention. So uh, welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you, Deb. It's always a pleasure to co-host with you, and I know this is a hot, hot, hot <laughs> topic that is just burning your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good way to put it. <laughs> That's such a good way to put it. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, last time I actually have another show of yours, um, Bars, rather, to post, 
um, that's going to be coming up. And I'm sure those folks who listen to this now, the post, the shows will, will also be um, posted. Uh, but usually when we get together, uh, things we talk about are, you know, really pretty good and um, people really get a lot out of them. So I, um, you know, it's really exciting to discuss this topic with you. But um, at this point where we're recording um, in early April, there's been a lot of changes in social media. And um, I'm definitely going to have you give your impressions, Carrie. So um, I just want to kind of set the stage right now that where we are right now, Facebook is, in my opinion, imploding. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that because I've never been, I'm going to go on record and people may not like it. I've never been a fan of Facebook. I'll tell you that right now that when I first even logged into that, I felt kind of vibes that made me go, ugh. Um, I'm an empath and I'm very sensitive to things like that. And I was like, mm, I don't know. Maybe I should burn some sage up in here. So <laughs> I never was excited about Facebook. But I'll be perfectly honest with you, you know, I reconnected with, with some lots of school friends, family, you know, I've made some announcements on there of personal nature. So I can understand the, the, the appeal. I'm not trying to discount that. But um, there's also been some negative things on there as well over the years. And lately, some things have come to light. If you watch the news, <laughs> Um, and, and I just saw yesterday that just about every user's personal data has been exposed. Not good. And they also saw something when I logged in yesterday about the facial recognition, which I never felt comfortable with. And um, mm, I don't know. I don't like that. But they're saying that's still going on. Mm -hmm. um, my feeling is, and I'm not going to talk just about all the other platforms right this minute, but I'm just putting Facebook first since that's a lot of the major one, the major one. Um, but my take on it is, and we've talked about this before, and I'm going to put that in the notes, in the show notes, um, about putting all your eggs in one basket. There's a whole lot of people with their business model based on Facebook, and they're not really thinking about interacting with human beings. And Carrie and I did a show about bots. And now they're kind of freezing that with Messenger. Lots of things changing right now. So um, I'm just going to step back because, you know, <laughs> I can say some things maybe I shouldn't. Uh, but I'm going to turn it over to my co-host and let oh. her let <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> and let her share her impressions right now of the social media climate, what she feels. Um, you know, we could probably just tell about Facebook right now because there are changes across the board and, and other problems as well. But um, your impressions, Carrie, about Facebook, what do you think um, is going on and what do you think that entrepreneurs should do? Well, you and I pretty much share the same opinion on on Facebook. I've never I, well, I've never really been a fan of social media and I, I've never hit that. Um, you know, I've always said from a, a branding standpoint that it's an ingenious concept because it's keeping your name out there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. I mean, there's a lot of people who um, really have tried to base their living off of Facebook. Um, you know, clearly you see from all of the different things that are out there with the Facebook ads, you know, you make $10,000 a month just placing simple Facebook ads. It, it brings me back to the, and I don't know if you remember this, but the uh, late 80s, early 90s with uh, Don LaPree, who used to be on late night yes. television talking about placing tiny classified ads. Yes. Um, it, it's kind of the same concept now, except it's on Facebook. So um, clearly there's been a lot of people who have made a lot of money, you know, teaching other people about how to use Facebook. Um, I, I, I've shared my experiences with Facebook ads on, you know, on our, our podcast. I mean, we, if people go back and listen to some of the other issue uh, episodes, they'll, uh, you know, hear me share those experiences, so I won't rehash those. Um, but definitely, yeah, there's 
here's some of the things that I am noticing as well. Um, a friend of mine, a colleague had posted something the other day and I thought, Oh, there's just no way. I'm like, come on. I don't know, like just out of morbid curiosity. I checked it out for myself where, uh, they were talking about, um, how Facebook has our political views. Mm-hmm. They, they have, summarized our political views and if you go under i think it's settings and then add add settings um you'll be listed as conservative liberal um and and whatnot and it's pretty dead on wow which was kind of scary because i do not share my political views on on social media i I just don't do it no so i was like that's kind of crazy that they would know that they were dead on with what they had me as. So uh, that was a little scary, to be honest. And I thought, wow, he wasn't kidding. He was right. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, So that you can actually look that up right now. If you go to your Facebook profile, go to settings and go to add settings, and it will have information about you um, that they have compiled from what you've looked at, what you have clicked on. So they have a lot more information than what they should have, number one. Mm -hmm. Um, But clearly in the news, you see where their stock has been plummeting. Facebook has been having a lot. They've got a lot to answer for at this point politically. Um, You know, there's there's just a lot going on. Um, And they've apparently, you know, they're trying to make it now. There's so many people that have Facebook business pages, myself included. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have another friend who actually has a a very uh, high level page that she has grown organically to over 90,000 followers on the page. And she has not spent one cent on Facebook. And she has even said that as of lately, they're doing everything they can to ensure that her posts don't get seen by her followers that oh. not like the page so she'll buy advertising and it's she said it's a constant battle to overcome their algorithm and and just you know to make sure that there's other ways you can do it but the point is we shouldn't even have to go that far um so it's as we we've, we've predicted um yeah. it's it's coming to a really nasty head and I, I think it'll probably get worse before it gets better, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, people, it, it's just like there's a lot of, and you see these posts too, and I, I've, I've done a few of them, and I've, I've put a few out there too. And uh, But when I was doing it, it was actually to gauge people's interest, you know, for pageantry and, and things like that. Um, but where I would say, oh, you know, what's your favorite? Will you be tuning in to watch the Miss America pageant or the Miss USA pageant? Um, you know, and then you see a lot of those, you know, uh, if the last, if the, if you were in a burning building and, and the last TV show, the main character had to save you, put a gif in here. So this way they know what you're watching on TV. You know, if it's old reruns or if it's something new. So they're collecting that information just and but we're doing it for them. We're actually doing the work for them. And that's what Mm. people don't realize. So, um, you know, there's there's just so much. And and the bots are a whole new thing. There's we're now seeing instead of Facebook ad experts, we now have Facebook chatbot experts. I saw an ad the other day for one. I had someone else who sent me an email on LinkedIn, uh, a direct message wanting to offer her services to me and, you know, Facebook chat. And it's like, no, I mean, you know, if I, here's the thing, I have um, 4,505 friends on Facebook. And then I think I have another 550 that follow me. They're, they're mm-hmm. not friends with me, but they follow me. I don't know exactly how that happened, but okay. Um, but logistically, uh, if I want to send the majority of those people an email, there's a way that you can do that. You know, mm-hmm. you just, you go into the, the messenger portion and you type up your message and then the to field, you put, I think it's an asterisk and then you put a and then hit enter and it pulls up every single person you're friends with that the first name starts with an A. And you just go through the whole alphabet and do that. And you can email everybody in your Facebook in less than an hour, really, if, if you're pretty quick about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, I'd rather do that and get somebody get, you know, why did you send me an email about blah, 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 blah. I don't do, you know, 
okay, whatever, you know, get upset about it, go or move on, unfriend me, whatever. Um, rather than doing a chat bot and what I, you know, we've talked about the chat bots. I mean, we've all gotten those and it's most people think still think they're viruses. I, I don't, I know when I'm getting one, but I still don't click on it for fear that it could be a virus. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've gotten a virus through Facebook. I've actually gotten two uh, since I've been on Facebook. The mm-hmm. first one uh, just wiped out my hard drive. Uh, yeah. You know, I had to reload everything. The second one actually crashed my computer to the point where I could not even use the hardware. Oh my God. So I don't click on any. Those. Yeah, you have to be really. I mean, it's it's getting to the point now where it's almost like, um, to kind of use the comparison, it used to be, you know, if we were walking home at night or walking home from school, we were coached on, okay, you don't talk to strangers, don't walk, you know, if it starts to get dark, don't walk by yourself, mm-hmm. you know, protecting yourself in that environment. Well, we now have a new environment, Deb, that we have to protect ourselves in. Yes. So. You know, so the bots bring on, that's a whole, a whole nother ball of wax. I mean, it's, uh, and like I said, it's the same thing with the pages and they're really from, from what I have been hearing in inner circles, Facebook has gotten so desperate to get more, they need advertising dollars. If they don't have them, they're not going to survive. No. Um, so they're doing everything they can, um, you know, to ensure that people buy advertising, whether it benefits them or not. Yeah. You know, I mean, I still get them all the time. Oh, reach another, you know, 2,500 people for just $8. And it's like, well, I shared this post in 25 to 30 different groups, and I've already gotten, you know, 1,300 people that looked at it. So for me to spend $8 to have another 2,500 people look at it, maybe they'll like my page, maybe they won't. It's just not worth the $8, and it's not worth me compromising my credit card information with them because no. they're st- I don't care what they say. Their security sucks. Yes, you're right. So... Um, it's just, it, it, it's coming to a really big, bad, ugly mess and it's going to, it's going to get worse before I, before it gets better. I'm hoping at some point Facebook will take a step back and say, okay, what can we do if we're going to keep our pat, our platform free? What can we do to protect the people who have this information? How can we, you know, leverage it differently? What could we do? You know, and, and it's just like we've said, you can't just base your business on Facebook. You've got to get out there. You know, maybe at some point they'll start having a city tour, uh, you know, um, you know, get to know us type thing. I mean, to yes. me, I think that would be an ingenious thing to do. Google does that. They go to events all the time. They mm-hmm. seek people out. I mean, you know, it's not that everybody's hiding behind that, that curtain, so to speak. So. Mm-hmm. But I think if they take a step back and figure out, they're going to have to do something and they're going to have to do it pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, I I completely agree. Everything that you have said, and as, as we had discussed in previous shows, uh, most of Facebook's money comes from ads. Mm-hmm. So this is a big blow to them that they cannot um, – You know, they may possibly have a problem here. Advertisers pulling out. I, you know, I've talked to a couple of people who are like not so thrilled with the Facebook right now. Mm -hmm. And I find myself not visiting there a lot lately. So I I have tried to be cautious about what I share there. But Mm -hmm. as you have said, I didn't know about that. You know, you're talking about the Facebook settings and the ad settings. I, you know, had no idea about how, I knew they were targeting people. I didn't know how they're, quite how it was working. But I do know based on when, uh, someone I was working with was showing me how to set up a Facebook pixel and going into Chrome, the, uh, browser, how the browser will tell you when you're on a site that uses a pixel, which means Mm -hmm. it's taking your information. So, and then I, I had gone to another site with book selling and someone was saying, Oh, you know, you can just take your list of people who unsubscribe from you and load them up into Facebook and then get like a duplicate um, audience. Mm -hmm. The Facebook will base an audience on that you could add, you know, advertise to. And I'm saying, well, 
would you want to be one of those people that they're loading in their emails into Facebook when you have already unsubscribed from someone's list? Mm-hmm. And they're using that to base another audience off. Uh, like, mm, I don't, you know, is that really something you're supposed to be doing? And then I just read something else about people's health information being exposed. Mm-hmm. This is not a good thing because you don't know how people are using this. You know, years ago, um, people were telling about their marital status and all this kind of nonsense and, and people weren't really thinking much about it. But then people would have pictures of them doing things on vacation and getting fired by teachers mm-hmm. <laughs> and things like that or saying, you know, they just robbed something mm-hmm. <laughs> and then getting caught by the police. Um, a lot of people aren't too bright out here. So the thing is that Facebook is kind of in a way like a town, a town square for some people. Not everybody. Everybody's not on there. I know people who are definitely not on there don't want to be there. But for some people it is. So putting your business out there is not necessarily a good thing right now. I mean, it probably never was. But I think before, when before we really understood what was going on, you know, we would share stuff. But now I would just have a lot, tell you to have a lot of caution. And if you're a business owner who's depending on Facebook to for ads or depending on Facebook to create audiences, I would say you better start looking at other ways for you to get other people, um, I don't know, in your prospect list. Because if things collapse, your whole business could disappear overnight, you know? Um, You know, and again, I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, what they're actually doing when they make that decision. And they have to realize, too, that, you know, there's always going to be issues anytime you put your information out there, even if you think it's innocent. And we've all done it. Um, Like I said, I I have always primarily used my social media specifically for business. I do try to, you know, some things that I don't care if people know about, you know, for example, um, the fact that I like pot belly pigs, you know, I want to have one as a pet someday. Um, you know, yes. Is that valuable information to someone who sells pot belly pigs? Of course, because I'm a potential customer, mm-hmm. but I don't make any secret of it that that's something that I want, but I don't feel that it's anything that's harmful either. Um, but you really have to, you do, you have to, I, I just, I cringe I still cringe to this day when I see people there and and I'm seeing less of it, which I think is a good sign where people are posting pictures of their children. Yeah. Um, You know, I know. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because those children can't protect themselves and there are a lot of high profile predators and that's, they'll even tell you the ones that get caught that's where they're finding these children is on social media. And it's because the mother, you know, oh, it's the first day of school. They're dropping them off at school. Well, it tags it that they're at whatever elementary school. So, you know, all they have to do is call and find out when does school let out? Oh, you know, we let the kids go at two 30. All they have to do is show up 15 minutes earlier, you know, and, or maybe watch your patterns. And I mean, they have, it's just scary the amount of information that predators will have online yep. when it comes to your children. Um, and I don't yep. have any kids, so, but I feel like it's probably a good thing I never did because I'd be superly overprotective, but I know I would, I would I, have been, <laughs> you know, um, my niece had a, a little girl, she just turned uh, a year old and she doesn't really post that many pictures on social media. She does send them to us like in messenger or, you know, through text message, but I'm so proud of her for doing that because, you know, but she said the same thing. You never know. Somebody could kidnap your baby. They could steal it. They could kill it. I mean, you just don't know. And you don't want to give them any kind of information or give people um, information that they don't need to have. I think that there's, we still have that line that you can physically draw in the sand. It needs to happen online as well. Um, but it's just, it, and I think the issues that Facebook is having, I think it's just a, a matter, well, I don't know, maybe not a matter of time before the rest of them do. I think Instagram, I think Twitter, um, you know, Pinterest, all of the other ones, I really feel like they're probably learning from Facebook and saying, Ooh, we got to make sure that doesn't happen. I think mm. they're trying to cut those off at the pass to make sure that the issues that they're having, they don't encompass. Um, I have actually this year switched more over to Twitter 
and growing my Twitter presence. And it's been a very good experience. Um, I'm still posting and, and using Facebook, but uh, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of people, a lot of celebrities that have cut their Facebook off completely. Mm. Um, Jim Carrey is one of them. He has completely deleted his entire Facebook account, but you can wow. see him on Twitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mostly because of their policies and proceed, he doesn't agree with any of, of the things that they're doing. Mm. Um, so that is something that, that he did. Um, uh, but I find that the celebrities are, if they are on social media, you're going to find them more on Twitter than you will on Facebook. Wow. So that tells us something too, you know. I didn't realize that, but um, I just haven't been felt comfortable with Facebook. And I know when I had done um, workshops at libraries and, and when I would do the Facebook classes, they'd be full. And there'd be age, all ages and everything, you know, and, and a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm on there just because I went up with flea markets, or I'm on there because I heard my grandkids are on there, or someone said I should do it, and they were kind of lukewarm. Nobody was in there trying to learn Facebook because they were excited about it. They were like, well, this one's on there, so I should be there. Yeah, so it's kind of like a requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's becoming, it's just like insurance. It's becoming the necessary. <laughs> right. And that's kind of sad if if, if you really think about it. Now, when you put it that way, though, Deb, it's kind of sad because it's kind of like, yeah, I'm on here because. Right. It's true, though. It's not because I'm so excited to be here. It's because I have to. Well, I have a friend. She said, I'm not on on Facebook. I said, honey, you're not missing much. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Just don't just don't even worry about it. Um. Because it is, it's something new to worry about. It's yes. something that has to be maintained. It's something that you, right. you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, right. it's like getting sucked into a vortex. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. I, you know, and like I said, and I think once my, my goal personally and professionally is to get my Twitter to a certain level. And I have a number in mind that I'm not going to share, but it's just a personal number that I have. Once I reach that, I will probably delete my Facebook account too. Um, mm. Just because it's, it's just too much, you know? Yeah. It, um, yeah it really is. And one thing when I was, when I, uh, on Twitter, yeah. I've used this uh, tool called scoop it, scoop it.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, to share, you know, content that already exists from different sites. And that helped me to grow my uh, list on Twitter in terms of entrepreneurship, you know, because I posted a lot about that, business ownership. <laughs> so I kind of do that. I mean, I post other things, too, because as, as I've mentioned to, to listeners, I also write um, paranormal romance and, and um, science fiction romance. So I really have integrated all of that. And from time to time, I post about those opportunities, if I see an opportunity for a writer or something, I post about that or I post about something funny or something, you know, maybe more serious. Uh, for the most part, though, my, my account there in that particular account is for business. So I found that has helped me to kind of grow a following on Twitter. And for me, I feel with Twitter, you, you share as much information as you want to, and then you keep it moving. You know, you don't really feel like with Facebook, with, where they have everything about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that sometimes can be a little unnerving because I know as a female, you know, one must, you know, kind of keep yourself, um, protected and in check. And, and from time to time, I've had men want to be my friend. And then you look and you see they've got no other friends with women. Mm-hmm. And that is kind of shady. And I usually shady. say... Shady. It's creepy. <laughs> it's just downright yes. creepy. I know that's happened to you too, Gary. <laughs> oh, it, it has. And and it's just usually what happens is if you do accept their friend request, it, it's pretty standard. And I don't know if it's the same guy or a multitude of men somewhere in a call center in China <laughs> that are doing this. But what happens is you accept their friend request and it's, they send you a private message and it's broken English. Oh, thank you for connecting. Love you. Please be my friend. And they're blowing kisses at you. And then they start liking all of your pictures. Um, I, and, and as soon as that has, as soon as I get that direct message, 
but I've kind of learned as soon as I get that, I, I unfriend them. Oh but I've learned, uh, this is what I will tell you about that. If you do just a quick tip, because I still get them. I got one today. Uh, I got a request from some guy. I've never heard, <laughs> never heard of him. We have one friend in common, <laughs> went to his profile and you can't see anything. Everything's private. I just went delete because I, I knew it's either the same guy. It's the same guy. Yeah, it could be the same guy. Hey, you're laughing, but it really could be. It could be somebody really oh desperate. Oh my god! So, um, I I just delete That's it, funny. and I would suggest to anybody listening, if you're getting those, just go ahead and delete them. Um. <laughs> You know, and, and usually I think that's what they do is they'll look oh, for geez. women who are listed as single on Facebook. And they're either after money um, or something crazy or, I mean, who knows? And and it could oh, be even goodness. more dangerous than that. Right, right, uh, right. It's some of the people who, who are sex traffickers. That's how right. they get some of these women. You know, right. oh, let's meet. I'll buy you a plane ticket. The plane ticket arrives. They go to another country. There and you go. The end of the game. <laughs> and then you're in a lifetime movie. <laughs> yeah. You are, you are. Um, so I, you know, whenever I see that, I'm like, if we don't have at least five or six friends in common, well, even if we don't have any, I will still go and look at their profile. Yes. And, you know, because if it is someone in pageantry now, I do go ahead and accept their friend request. Mm-hmm. And, but I do the same thing. If they start liking all my pictures, send me creepy messages. I'm yeah. like, yeah, we're, we're done. Right. Uh, you you've just been unfriended. Um, and you know, don't, don't come back. So, and I just leave it at that because I just don't have time to do anything else or to report it or, mm-hmm. or, you know, or so forth. And, and to anymore, if you report anything to Facebook, they don't do anything about it anyway. I know you're right. Um, right. so, uh, yeah, so it's just not even worth it. But yeah, a lot of those, I think it's the same creepy guy looking for a date. <laughs> The same um, guy? That's just so funny to me. <laughs> it, it could be, like I said. And the reason I say that is I remember last year or the year before last, I actually had someone who sent me a friend request. I accepted it. Same thing. And this guy's dressed up like an army colonel. Or, yes, they were yeah. in the army or something. And uh, anyway, so <laughs> he starts sending me creepy messages, and I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. And I just, you know, unfriended him. Well, not even like a day later, I got a direct message from someone who was not a friend of mine. It was a woman, and she had asked me, she said, I noticed that you accepted so-and-so's friend request. Uh, do you know much about him? And, you know, because he wants me to send him money, and he's saying he's going through a door. And I'm like, oh I finally, I, just, I emailed the lady back, and I said, look, I, I said, I unfriended him. My suggestion would be don't send him any money unfriend him and just you you can't trust people like that just please wow communicating with him because that's what they want they want you to keep interacting so they can you know yeah get something out of you oh my god Um, so it it must work i mean there must be um out there who yeah so (laughs) Which is, that's just, to me, is just beyond that. But it's the same thing with these people who get these letters from other people who are in Nigeria. Or well, that's true. their grandson is in jail. That's such a cliche now. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. And it happens. I, and it's, it happened to people I know. I, my hairdresser and, you know, which I feel bad. She's, she's been very sick and she's been mm-hmm. on medicine, you know, medication. And she got a call, uh, a couple of weeks ago and she said it sounded just like her grandson. And he said, I was at a wedding this weekend. I got arrested and I, you know, it wasn't anything bad, but it's the bail money is $200. Could you please send it? And, he said, you have to send the wire transfer through Western Union and it's going to go to, um, I think it was in the Caribbean mm-hmm. and, and he was in Kentucky or mm-hmm. Tennessee for this wedding. Mm-hmm. And she said, I should have put two and two together, but she was still so grogged up from the medicine. She didn't really think about it. And she sent $200 oh Western God. Union to the Caribbean and whoever it was picked her up, picked up the money and it, her grandson was never in jail. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So, um, you know, I think people, there's still quite a bit of being gullible, but I also think yeah. too that some of these people who are bad, they're getting a little bit more cunning. Uh, oh, yeah. they're figuring out ways to, uh, yeah. you know, they prey on people's vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. That, that's true. And I, I think Look at that, the IRS you know. scam. Look at the, that's oh not. my God, I get those calls. I'm like, get out of oh, here. Oh, do you? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I get next those time calls. you get them. 
I want you to keep him on the line, and we need to do another <laughs> podcast segment with us talking to the IRS agent because I could make that funny for at least an hour. At least. That would be funny. That would be funny. You just it left be. a message, you know, and I'm like, get out of here. You know, yeah. oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, that's that's another thing, I think. I think people... our listeners would love that. I mean, it would be very entertaining. <laughs> that could be women entrepreneurs after hours. So. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to think about that one. <laughs> I, I have not gotten any of those calls. I have to tell you, I'm a little disappointed. Um, everybody else gets them but me. Yes, um, I've gotten, I've gotten, I've gotten them, um, and I'm like, what? Because <laughs> it, well, <laughs> it is, it's true. I, you know, some people do record it, like they'll do a YouTube, and I'm gonna probably do the same thing too because I have such a scavenger hunt for whoever calls me. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be <laughs> awesome. And I am gonna record it, you know, like kind of have somebody record it on YouTube oh or something, God. so I can That's... upload it and, and make money off of YouTube because I can almost guarantee you mine would get at least a million views. I want to hear that one. Oh my God! Yeah, they're they're kind of like really, but I can understand how if you've never gotten one, you're startled because you're like, what? You know? Yeah. And then when you've gotten them, and you're like, oh my goodness! But <laughs> <laughs> okay, here you go again. You know. <laughs> But that, that's the thing, you know, and I think that's what we're talking about is that what people need to, need to realize now is that we're in this global um, economy and this global thing, and people can reach out to you from anywhere, tell you anything, and you really have to stop and think a little bit like, hmm, okay, um, does this make sense uh, before you react? Well, when the IRS starts asking you for Target <laughs> gift cards... <laughs> Um, well, the one YouTube video that I watched, which I have to say, it was, it was a little bit longer than I would normally waste my time on. I think it was about 25 minutes long. And he had already had the guy on the phone for about an hour. And he said he wanted a hundred. No, yeah, it was a hundred Target gift cards and it had to be because the guy wanted five thousand dollars, they each had to be fifty dollars. So part of yeah, he part of the what was so funny was he goes okay. He goes, I just came back from from I left the Target store, and the guy told him the IRS agent said, don't tell anybody in the store what you're doing. So he goes okay. So he's like, I just got back from from Target, and I got I got all of these. Um, oh my uh, god! What was it? It was. Um, Gift tags. He said, I got, I got a hundred gift tags. There, who, who do I make the gift tags out to? And the guy goes, no. He said, I want you to read me the number off the back. He goes, well, there is no number off the back. That's where put, I have to put who the gift is to and who it's from. And the guy was really getting frustrated. He goes, no, target gift cards, not gift tags. What? He goes, but he said, I just bought a hundred of these. Oh he said, what God. do I have to do with all these gift tags? That's and the crazy. Guy, I mean, this went on for so long. And finally, the guy told him, he said, look, he said, I know this is a scam. And he said, I have to tell you, he said, you've given me, he said, my family is sitting here laughing so hard. And he said, I want to thank you for giving me an hour of entertainment. I'm going to upload this to YouTube and make a little bit of money. (laughs) But at least I was able to keep you from scamming someone else for at least an hour. And, of course, the guy hung up. Um yeah, That's that that insane. was just like, I loved it. Um, oh my god! Yeah, now that yeah that I'll have to check those out. But oh, they're they're funny. I mean, if you do, if you have like about an hour to waste, there's there's a couple of ones <laughs> on there. But that one was the best one because he was just so distraught that the guy went in there and bought a hundred di- gift tags. For like <laughs> gift gift cards. tags, it's so good yeah. for it. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! No, but that's no. just the thing, you know. People, we have to be more discerning about things. You know, you may be trusting, you may think, well, why would someone do that? But we're in a totally different world right now, and you have to understand that everybody doesn't mean you well, and they're trying to to rip you off, and they get your information, your data, 
right there. And as a, as a former IT person, I can tell you your data is all over the world. It's been there because a lot of these major corporations have outsourced. Mm -hmm. um, hate to break your break it to you, but <laughs> you know, your information is everywhere already. It's been everywhere for quite some time. If you use any kind of cards to take a discount at your grocery store or anything like that, they track everything you're doing, everything you're buying, and somewhere there's a database that's collecting all the information and, and kind of targeting you for certain things. I'm not saying they're targeting you for bad things. Some people are. Some There are some bad actors, but your your privacy is not this is not existent it's not existent right now I'm just, I'm just saying it's not existent it is and like i said i don't think people realize even just the tiniest thing you're getting you know it's just like i put on twitter before oh getting settled in to watch the final season of the walking dead well that tell you know they'll they'll pick that up yes. and they can say, oh, okay, so she likes the walking dead right, right. um what else does that tell us about right. her you know right. so right Right, you're um, right. Yeah, so it's it just it's really, um, and like I said, when I logged in and I saw my ad preferences and everything that was there, wow. I, I thought about changing everything, and you know, instead of you know, but they didn't have anything listed for communist. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, just to just I guess to really, that's so 1950s, yeah. you know. I, I, <laughs> You know, I just, I don't know. They didn't have fascist, communist, none of that stuff is listed. So what I may do at this point is send Facebook an email because you can't call them. No. Um, no even if you have it. a billing problem, you cannot get any. No. Email. Forget it. So uh, I thought about sending in, um, you know, just a comment form, you know, hey, you know, if you're, if you're going to put this out there, you, you should be equal opportunity across the board. <laughs> And have every possibility listed. You know, people who want to identify with the political party of being an, a unicorn it should be on there too. I mean, I just, uh, yeah. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry. Well, I, I'm just, I'm just dying over here, but. <laughs> And I hope the audience finds this just as amusing as we do. Because I, but like I said, we've been talking about this for so yes. long. Yes. What, a year and a half? Yeah. Probably longer than that. And yes. it's, uh, wow, it's yes. coming true. Yeah. Big we surprise. Because remember we had the show about bots, and I, I sent you the email that Ugh. they're suspending the bots. Mm -hmm. So this is the stuff we've been saying the whole time. And I'm really time. upset that nobody's wearing space pants <laughs> Now, if I had someone out there who had a chat bot business, let me help you build build your chat bot, you know, or build your business with chat bots, and they were wearing space pants or space shorts, I would sign up. I really would. Oh, my God. Um, oh, that was the best. That was funny. That was hilarious. Yes, I will. I will put that in the show notes so you guys will know what what these shows Space are. Cancer. Yeah, <laughs> basically, you gotta, put, you gotta tag you that video. <laughs> I actually watched that again the other night just because I came across <laughs> it on YouTube. I'm like, oh my gosh, Space Camp! I hit play. <laughs> that was I just, funny. I just, I can't get tired of that video. I, so yes, everybody, you can go back because we're at, we've said this, we said these things. You know, we're, we're, we are futurists, even though we may not have the billing that people get who get millions of dollars to be futurists, but we're telling ya, and we've told ya, <laughs> if you've been listening to our show, <laughs> where things are um, going. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's my only concern with the whole thing. I just, cause like I said, I really feel it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I agree. I, I yeah. I, I just, I just, I, in a way that's, I'm hoping that I reach my number on Twitter before it gets worse because I, that way I can just say, oh, delete. I don't think it's like anymore. I agree with you. There's people who are just bailing on Facebook right now. And, um, I can understand that because your mm -hmm. privacy and they talk about the facial recognition of your pictures. Yeah. There's people who take people's pictures and put them on avatars like say on Twitter and then they say all kinds of awful things and then you're like what you know that's not me 
Yeah. But they're scraping that information and, and creating profiles, and there's no way you can know all that stuff because you how would you know what was going on? So I think it's hard. You, even though you want to protect your data, it's really hard because now this company, they're selling your data. And it's like the old um, saying that, you know, when you're watching TV, the TV's watching you. <laughs> it's like... You know, they, if you think it's, it's a passive thing you're seeing there, but then when it comes to things like cable and whatever, they're collecting data on you. And, excuse me, Facebook's whole company is based on data. And Cheryl Sandberg, I believe her name is, I, you know, re retweeted an article by her, uh, I think from today or yesterday, where she said, well, if you want to have an account where they don't share your data, you got to pay for it. Well, how many people will do that? I don't think many. So this is, I, the, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, who's going to pay for that to not have your, how can you be sure that that's not happening? So. It's, but, you know, again, it goes back to, like we said before, back old school. Remember the yes. pages, the phone book? Yes. You signed up with a phone company. If you wanted an unlisted number or you didn't yes. want to be listed, you had to pay You're for right. that. You're right. You're right. You're right. You had to pay to not be in that You're book. You're right. You're right. So true. it's, it's all, you know, it's like people was, Oh, cold calling dead. Call, you know, no, it's not, you know, it's like, this is basically they've recycled all of this information. And if anything, all of this stuff that we used to do, sending actual letters, snail mail, I mean, calling mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. going and meeting them in person are mm -hmm. making a comeback because yes. people, you know, it, it's yes. just, it's just getting to that. And not everybody's on Facebook. I agree. You're right. I mean, I think at one point they were saying, oh, you know, we have, I can't remember how many, do you know how many people they're saying now are on Facebook? Do you know what the statistics are? I don't know, but I know they said around 2 billion people's data was, was taken. So that's around probably the, the people who are on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So 2 billion out of the whole world. That's, yeah. well, that's a small number. It is. It is. You're right. So I, you know, it's just, and, and I still, I mean, I, I know people who are, you know, in business that are doing very well. I know people who are celebrities that, you know, I think even Whoopi Goldberg has said, I've heard, well, I don't know if she's changed her mind, but at one mm -hmm. point she was not on social media. Yeah. I wouldn't she, blame. Yeah. She has said on her, on the view, I, I'm not on social media. So if you see yeah. accounts on there, that's not me. Um, so yeah. I mean, there's still plenty of people that, they're like, no way. Right. I agree. <laughs> I agree with them, though, because you're exposing yourself to a lot of things that maybe you just don't want to deal with. And I totally agree. And I think it's just kind of interesting, Kara, because when, when social media started, and it seems like it was just yesterday, but it really was several years ago. And it was all fun and games and everybody was on there and just having fun. And suddenly it's become something else entirely. Well, I hate uh, to use this expression, but, you know, the road to hell is paved <laughs> with good intention. And I think this is it's just another, I mean, it, it's awful You're to right. say, but it's its just, that's just, it, I yeah. think. Everybody thought at first this is a great thing. We can connect with people from around the world. And then it, it just as it grew and it morphed and it got bigger and it just it's it's like it, it just it gets that's when everything turns bad. Yeah. You know? Um yeah. I agree. So yeah, I, I just I think that there is something mm -hmm. and I think you're gonna see this trend in business too. I I could be wrong, but I'll make another prediction here. You know, I think it's going to get to the point where people are going to want to see they're going to want global reach, but they're want it, they're going to want it to be contained. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, one of the things that I love about Twitter is that I can follow you. You don't have to follow me back if you don't mm -hmm. want to. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you do, then you're going to get my information in your feed and you can yeah. see it. Um, that's your choice. So whereas on Facebook, it's you make friends with somebody. They see your stuff, you see theirs mm -hmm. and a story. Yeah. yeah. And I think Twitter has a little bit uh, more of a, a better defense mechanism for, you know, I mean, we can retweet things that we can see. We can comment on them if we need to. If we want to direct message somebody, we can. Mm -hmm. um, and they can, you know, get back with us if they'd like. But there's it's just more of a controlled atmosphere. Yeah. But I think that Twitter has also 
purposely, and I think I, I know why they're doing it, has purposely kept themselves small. Mm -hmm. Because I think they know, like I said, I think a lot of these other social media companies are looking at Facebook going, we can't let this happen. Mm -hmm. We don't have the manpower. We can't, you know, and like I said, I don't even know if Facebook can fix what they've done. No, I don't. I, yeah, I wonder Um, that myself. Yeah. So I I think it's going, and I think you're going to see the same trend in business. You know, people want to, oh, we want to be able to, you know, it's just like with my pageant training. I can service any, anybody anywhere. But there's probably going to be a limit on that, mostly mm. due to the language barriers, um, yeah. you know, uh, and also, too, just with, you know, uh, payment options. You know, if we have someone that wants to pay us that's from Australia, it shouldn't really be an issue. But if we have somebody from India or somebody from Pakistan that, you know, maybe there's uh, it makes it stricter or it's going to delay getting paid or getting, you know, Those are things that are all going to factor into that. So Mm -hmm. at some point, even though I have kind of a global reach, I'm even containing myself and going, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to either limit the number of people I'm working with and raise my prices, which I Mm -hmm. I have a program like that. Or, you know, for the other people who are in group coaching, you know, it'll have to get capped off at a certain number. And I'll probably at some point say, okay, it's United States, Canada and Australia and, and different parts of your, you know, of the UK or, or of Europe. And, and then that's going to be it. Yeah. Um, and everything else will have to be on a case by case basis because I think when people do that, when they try to, they build up a successful business, they're doing well and they're like, Oh, I want to get bigger or I can mm-hmm. take this global. I can take, you know, but mm-hmm. I think there is a, like I said, I think that people have good intentions, but not realizing that when you have that kind of reach, you're also, you also have to be able to retract in the yeah. same direction. And if you can't do that, if you don't have some type of backup plan prepared, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I but I think you're going to start seeing a trend of that. I think you're going to see less people wanting to, um, you know, do all of that. And and uh, you're going to see them kind of retracting a little bit or making or being more selective. If anything, mm-hmm. you're going to see them go in the opposite direction because, uh, you know, just for different different reasons. But you look at what what's happened here um you know, with Facebook and, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like we, I reported a page not too long ago and someone else reported the same page and it was for animal abuse. And it turns out they were okay with it. Mm. It was a standard form. They sent back to everybody. They were, they didn't feel like it violated their policy. Wow. And as long as it doesn't violate their policy and they're getting paid for it, they right. don't care. Oh my God. Um, so that was a little scary too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Um, well, see, that's the thing. And, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not against online, the online world or anything like that. I'm not talking from that perspective, but I think that we have to really understand that when you, when a lot of people are involved, everybody's bringing their own thing with them. And some people are not on the up and up and some companies don't care because they're going to make money. And I think if you're a business person, you need to keep your eyes open as to not just what's going on in your little spot, but what's going on in general, because that's going to affect your business. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of what we're saying here is not just to say, well, you know, I bought this system. This person isn't selling me anything different. Well, they're not because that's what they're selling you. But you have to have your awareness to know that this doesn't look good. So maybe I should not just put all my eggs in this Facebook basket when it might explode and my business is gone. So I need to make some decisions and not just follow blindly other people telling you things that maybe they may have other things going on they're not telling you about, but they're just going to sell you a system that is leading you somewhere where you're going off a cliff. So that's my point here is that you need to keep your eyes open and keep aware of what's going on around you. Facebook is in trouble. Let's be real. It is. And if you're a business person and you, every bit of your business is there, you need to be looking for other things that you're doing here. And that's what I feel. And Instagram is on my Facebook. So that's another thing to keep in mind right now. Instagram is a different kind of system. Uh, but I'm noticing more ads on there lately. 
definitely noticing more ads. So that's another thing. And, and they're also making some changes to their um, uh, API, which is, you know, uses a connector for people to build like third party software and things like that. And they're saying, well, if you still want to use that, you can be the business account. Well, the business account ties back to your Facebook page. And, and then mm-hmm. they may be encouraging more people to do ads and things like that because they want, of course, the revenue. So just saying there's nothing wrong with Instagram so far that I've heard, but again, it's on my Facebook. So you're putting all your eggs in that basket too. I would be aware of that. Just saying I'm on there too, but I'm just saying, just, just have an awareness. Um, and just to say like, for instance, Snapchat, I've mentioned before, I'm not on there, but I have heard that a lot of people are on there who weren't on Facebook, but Snapchat made some changes, I guess, because they weren't, Gaining revenue and then the changes a lot of people were saying they didn't like, so people left there. Um, so that's not a thing that it happened recently. Um, Twitter we've talked about uh fairly recently. I had a thing where I couldn't log on to Twitter until I gave them a uh a phone number. I didn't know what the heck was the problem, I still don't know, but I got a phone number from Google Voice that you can have a phone number without exposing your own phone number. So if that's something you feel you want to do, look up Google Voice, create a phone number, and you can do that if any platform asks you for one. Um, I'm not sure why they asked for one. Maybe they want to prove I wasn't a bot. But I'm just saying, you want to try to protect your personal information as much as you can. There's only so much you can protect these days. But... Just keep that in mind when you're doing that. Um, I would just adjust. Um, I'm just also saying Pinterest is making changes as well. Um, I haven't found that to be as volatile as other places right now. It's a different kind of thing. Pinterest is more of a search engine. Mm-hmm. So if you're selling a product particularly, services too, but products particularly, that's a wonderful place for you to be. So consider that if you're not on there. I think they have advertising as well, but I think you can still get mileage organically, it seems to me, and they have pins that you can buy, whatever, but if people search online, Pinterest results do show up in Google. So it's something to consider um, as a business owner. And, of course, um, I'll just say, you know, and I'll just ask you, Kara, what your thoughts are. I mean, you know, we talked about networking people relating to each other um just in person but i've also seen things about membership sites lately and i think my um assumption is they're going to make a comeback off of facebook um because people are going to be migrating off of there and and my membership sites were a thing before facebook groups became a thing Mm -hmm. so i think that's going to make a comeback because people are going to want those spaces they can be and interact without necessarily being in a place where people can steal their information. So I think I'm not saying build one because I think it's going to be an investment, but I, I'm just saying that that's how I see things going. Well, forward. I, so what do you I agree. I agree with that. Um, we actually, one of, you know, for the pageant platform magazine, our site is hosted on wild apricot, which okay. is a membership based platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when people are, you know, when the contestants are looking at, uh, you know, signing up to create their platform or improve their platform, or if they want to be part of our group coaching, they sign up online and that creates their membership profile. So when they log in, they have access to members only content, but they can also interact with one another if they'd like to do that. Uh, you know, and they can actually put, you know, have like a member card um, that's an app based card. So I am seeing that is one thing that I have found wild apricot has actually inst- instigated a lot of changes this past year. Mm. Uh, I'm talking about 2017 to where they have a lot more features for interacting, a lot of different things that you can put on your site uh, where you can feature more of your members, give them more exposure. And it probably filters through um, with, you know, cause a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, membership type companies will do that. They're like, oh, we have an exclusive Facebook group. Well, if you're not on Facebook, that doesn't help you. 
Mm. And nobody wants to start a Facebook profile just to be part of your group. So if you have it where they can actually still interact online and interact with one another and make connections, then that's great where they don't even have to go on, you know, to Facebook or, you know, where they do, you know, the plugin used to be a big thing. Oh, well, all they have to do is log in with Facebook or they, mm-hmm. and they still have that. Um, but they have it where there's more interactive possibilities just contained within the website itself. Mm. So I think I do agree with that. Um, you know, and, and the membership thing, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I'll have a free level. Well, I, I've had a free level before. It's one of the worst things you can possibly do for your business because if people are there just signing up for a free profile, it's kind of like they're running around, they're joining all the Facebook groups and not really interacting or doing anything where if they have to pay, it's an investment on their part. So they're invested in it and they want to see it work. So mm-hmm. um, I do think that you're going to see more of a spike in the membership platforms, mm-hmm. uh, you know, through WordPress or through Wild Apricot or whoever people use. Um, but I think it's going to be a little bit different because it also, too, again, you can get tons of exposure on Facebook. We're getting tons of exposure, but it's it's generating very little sales, mm-hmm. very little. It's mm-hmm. not enough for the amount of time that we put into it. Mm-hmm. Well. That's very interesting, actually. And, um, you know, if you're someone who has a Facebook page, I think I mentioned this before, where you can post on in your groups as your page, and then you'll get statistics to tell you how much reach you actually have. And you may be very surprised that people are not seeing your post the way you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind if that's what you're doing. Um, just to get an idea of what people are actually seeing and what they're not. So I, I don't know. I, I kind of think that a lot of that algorithm change to kind of restrict people seeing things is going to work against them now because when they did do that change, a lot of people, and myself included, were like, you know, why am I wasting my time here? Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to really work against them because a lot of people who um, maybe weren't making the big money on there or could they say, well, what the heck? Why am I here? Why am I wasting my time? Let me go elsewhere. And, um, you know, even LinkedIn that I haven't mentioned, um, you know, there's opportunities there as well, depending on who you're trying to reach. So, and of course, there's probably countless other platforms and forums that are specific to what you're doing that may be a good place for you to be. And of course, don't forget, interacting with people one-on-one and individuals in person that are really worth your time, you know. Sometimes you got to put the work in and do that that interaction with human beings face to face. And you may not want to do that because whatever reason, but I think it's going to come back to that that kind of thing where you just interact with folks and you talk to them and let them know what you're doing and, and go from there. And that's another reason why I think you're correct with the membership platforms, because a lot of them, too, um, you know, you have the capability to do events, you know, just where they can register directly on your site. It could be a members only event, uh, members only content. And it just it kind of makes it a little bit more exclusive. But with the events, you know, you could, again, do those anywhere and yeah. but still have the same website where people can go and register and learn more about the event or share it. Um, or, you know, even say, hey, I'm attending, and you can see a list of people that are attending that event in that area and just make it more, you know, we're doing the same thing, you know, where we're going to kind of go to different cities and do our um, our our sponsorship class and mm-hmm. you know, for pageants. So it's, you know, it's a way for them to learn about it online. They can register, but then they'll be able to meet us in person and meet other people mm. in the community that are interested in the same thing. So there's a lot to be said, like, and, and you're right, we're, we're going back to, we're regressing where we're going back to more of the phone conversations, the let's meet in person because People are just, you know, again, they're just inundated, they're overwhelmed, and it's just too much. Yeah, you're right. I, I completely agree. And if people don't see any result because of these changes and algorithms, and, uh, you know, I was sharing with, with Jerry, uh, Carrie before um, the show about a, a book site I'm on that you can get free books and free portions of your book. And they're instituting a change called General Data Protection Regulation that comes out of Europe 
that happens in May, which means you cannot mandatory, um, you can have a mandatory thing where people to sign up on your list to get your book. You, they have to have a choice to opt out. And if they ask for information about their data, they need, you know, you're required to let them know what information you have on them. Mm-hmm. And that's being instituted in Europe. Um, I don't know if it's the entire continent or, or specific com- um, countries, but they are really cracking down. I'm sure it's in reaction to what's going on on Facebook. So um, those are things that you're a global company. You need to be aware of that you can't go to this thing where you're forcing people to sign up or forcing people to do this or that or think that oh, I've got your email list. I can, I can do whatever I want with it. I think we, we got to that point, and now I, I feel that that is over, at least in certain places. It's not going to work. It's not going to work anymore. So you're going to have to go back to basics, interact with people, treat them like human beings and not like numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want their business. And actually do some selling. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line, I think, right now. I'm not saying that the bots won't take over the world eventually or anything like that. <laughs> They're trying to. I, you know, again, I, I, again, it, it just, it, it goes down to, I'm finding the same people that were promoting the Facebook ads are promoting this bots thing. And, mm. um, you know, I've, I've talked to people who, you know, the people who have really made money off of Facebook ads, they're putting in six to 10 grand of their own money first. Wow to invest and, and, and sample and, and test the market and do split testing and beta testing and all this other kind of testing. And, uh, then they start to find something that works and then that's what they duplicate. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but most people don't have that kind of disposable right. income right. Um, to, you know, to do that. So right. I it's, agree. it's not going to happen. That's the thing. I think people need to understand that a lot of the, a lot of the people who are out here, at the top of the game who are promoting what they do and selling their systems are spending tons of money to be at the top of the game. And they may tell you it's so simple and easy. Here's my two step system, but they're not telling you all the people who are helping them do it, the money they've invested, all the money they invested over the years to get there. They're just telling you, well, here I am. Here's my little system and you can spend nine ninety nine for it, but they may spend it, spend it. They may, Spend nine thousand ninety nine to get there, or ninety ninety thousand ninety nine to get there. They're not telling you that. And then when you're there with nothing left and wondering what you did wrong, it's not you. It's it's just the way it was presented wasn't realistic to begin with. Mm-hmm. So you just understand that this is a different playing field globally to reach people. Um, it's not to say you can't do it and and start off with a low barrier of entry, Mm -hmm. but you have to be realistic about what is involved. Understand these changes going on with privacy. People are very concerned about that. Please believe Mm -hmm. Um, they don't want their data all over the place, even if it already is um, here, but they they're looking at this and they don't want these things to happen. So do not just put all your your eggs in one basket as far as your business. Just don't do it. It's just not logical. It's not going to work for you. I think we can't emphasize it enough. So um, we may have just kind of, you know, gone on about this a bit. <laughs> um, I know well, I it's have. Definitely, there's still a lot more to come. I mean, it's, it's yeah. still going to be a yeah. game. I mean, we're, we've had a great time with it, but it's, it's yeah. I yeah. hope that it, resolves itself quickly i do and I, I just you know like i said i wanted to talk to carrie about this because i do think we're in another stage now of the social media thing and we are yeah without a doubt i really do and i just wanted us to kind of talk about that and, and let you know what our thoughts were since you know as as we mentioned we've said this for quite some time now you know what we're saying may not sound all nice and sexy <laughs> you <laughs> we're not <laughs> well you know we're not telling you you can make five dollars five million in five minutes so maybe you didn't want to hear that but it's time mm-hmm. to listen because because now your business could be in the balance if things go under 
for the platform that you've invested everything in because someone told you that was the way to go and then you find out it's all gone and then that person who's telling you that really had 10,000 other things going on and they're still rolling and you're with nothing. You don't want that. So please, please keep in mind that there's a lot of things going on. Please keep your eyes open, your ears open. Don't just listen to one person or two people, three people, or even us telling you. Look, read the news. I mean, the real news. <laughs> read the real exactly. news. Exactly. <laughs> read and, many sources. <laughs> and it, and like I said, there's just going to be a lot of changes coming, and it, it'll it's going to be an interesting year, I think. I think wow. so. Very interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of changes happening, a lot of things going on. So just protect yourself. Protect yourself right now and in, in, in your investments. That's all I'm going to say. That's my feeling. And, um, you know, just kind of be willing to adapt. That's that's the best thing I could say right now. So I think we've covered, <laughs> covered this, you know, like there's so much going on. But I think we've covered as much as, as we can with this particular um, particular thing, Carrie. So unless you have something else to throw in there. <laughs> No, I think we've covered everything with this topic. Um, I'm sure I'm going to probably make another prediction. This won't be our last show on it for this year, for 2008. No, I don't think so. I don't think so because it's, it's happening so quickly that um, every time I look on, on, you know, online to see what new thing that's been said, it's something else entirely. So I'm, I'm, I totally agree with you. It's going to keep changing and we may have, you know, we're saying now completely changed by next week because something, some other announcement happened. So just be wary, be, keep your eyes open, your ears open and just make good choices for yourself and your business. And um, I think you will be able to get through this. Um, so um, once again, <laughs> it's been uh, Women After News Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. Carrie Heath, thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.